doing what they're supposed to do. And like the uh, Capital Area District Library, they're spending taxpayers' money on this. And that's it's very unfortunate. And, and we, we do have a, um, a bill that was referred out of the committee in the House recently. Um, it's Bill 4795 that's now sitting on the House floor. Uh, that would really help, I think, in these sort of situations. What it would do is if, if we have, say, in, in this case where we sue a public entity and, and we win, the public entity has to pay all of our attorney's fees. And then if the public entity is found to have knowingly and willingly violated the law, then there's some penalties there, too. The idea is not to be punitive, per se, against these entities. It's to say, look, there's going to be repercussions, so right. you should try and settle this in a reasonable fashion. And if you don't, then we're going to make sure the people that were right are not harmed twice. Because I'm a resident of Kent County, right. so I'm going to be paying for this lawsuit because I donate to Michigan Open Carry. Plus and then I'm going to be paying through my taxes to right. pay for the other side to fight me. Right, and our, and the members of MOC that live in that county are also going to pay. Yep, they'll be in the exact same situation I am, paying for both sides of the lawsuit. So, so the bill you're talking about is putting some teeth into preemption that will yep. make these local municipalities at least maybe think twice before they violate the law and people's rights in this regard. They'll at least go, hmm. Yep. There's some there I, there. I could have some repercussions. I could I could be uh, held liable and, and have punitive damages in a financial w- a manner against me. Yeah, there's, if there's I something do it. we call bleeding, where a lot of these anti-gun public entities know that they're wrong. But you know what? Right. Let's just make them sue us because that's twenty thousand dollars that they now can't use for something else. Right. And there's no money is going to come out of our pockets because it's all going to be taxpayer funded. Right. Right. And they, they, I mean, we have literally been told, sue us before. That didn't happen in this case, even though right. it's pretty darn clear again, yeah. that's what they're saying. But we have literally been told that. And, and that's how brazen some of these public entities have become. So that's why this, this bill has now made it out of committee. It's on the House floor, and we're hoping when the legislature gets back around to coming back from their long summer vacation, it'll, it'll move off the floor and get passed and sent over to the Senate. Right. And, and MOC also has another lawsuit in a similar situation against a school district. Yep, yep. Uh, for the first time, uh, Michigan Open Carry is engaged in two lawsuits simultaneously. Um, we're, we're, we're growing up, we're getting bigger, and yep. we're, we're pushing the brown boundaries a little bit more. Um, a little while ago, I think late, late last year, we filed a lawsuit against Clio Area Schools, south of Frankenmuth on the east side of Michigan. That's north the of judge Flint. And, yep, just north of Flint. Yep. Uh, same county as Flint, the judge sided with us, said, yep, the school, their policy is unlawful. State law clearly allows firearms to be um, possessed in the manner that the father was possessing them. Right. Uh, the school's policy is legal. They can't do it. School, you have to follow state law. Um, that was a great win for us. Uh, to be honest, gun groups are used to losing at the lower level. Um, usually judges kind of go at a lower level, tend to go a little bit more on emotion because they have to... Um, uh, be elected back to their voters <laughs> be elected uh, <laughs> yeah yeah it happens i mean you look back at our history we lose a lot at the lower level but then once it gets up to the appellate level that we tend to win a lot more there because they tend to look uh, at the actual law right and they're not reporting to voters nearly right, as much as, right. as the lower level is uh, so and and we won at the lower level and in our opinion that's because how cut and dry the case was that case also hinged on that Capital Area District Library um, precedent that I just mentioned before. So again, it, it, in my opinion, is one of the, the biggest landmark cases oh, in the state's history. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of every lawsuit we've seen since then has been referenced off of Capital Area District Library, and just I, and, trying to apply that and get all these entities to say, "Look, you guys need to follow the law. You don't have to like it." You can ask the legislature to change sure. it. That's fine. You have to follow. Until it. then, I. I I feel good because I actually have uh, testimony in that trial on on the record. <laughs> I actually testified at the circuit court level. And actually the judge said that my testimony uh, was very sincere and she really thought sure, sure, sure. I did a good job sure. and actually admonished the, the library because she was <laughs> – because of the um, – the, uh, uh, oh, what was it? Oh, First Amendment, because she, she, they weren't going to allow me to testify at their board meeting. 
and they were patting me uh, down and saying I was carrying guns and all this stuff. And she says, oh, you put a chilling effect on this man to exercise his First Amendment right. This isn't, this isn't Russia. I think she said something like that and chewed them out on that, but screwed us on the Second Amendment. <laughs> But anyways, I, I, my, my name and testimony is in that record, and that's kind of cool. Um, Good. I'm just patting my own back did now. You, um, did you get a sucker? I got a for... sucker <laughs> and, and a sticker. See, Roy, and that's kind of one of those things that little... you're right, but I'm still not going to care. Yeah. And I got a little sticker that says, I'm a big boy. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but now Clio schools, I'm assuming, are, are appealing that. Yep, the Clio has appealed to the Michigan uh, uh, Court of Appeals. Uh, we're hoping to have oral arguments heard by the end of the year. But as you're familiar, oh, definitely with the Capital Area District Library case, they take their sweet time. Yeah, it takes forever. Uh, we are very confident in the case. Otherwise, we would have not have pushed it. We expected it to go to the Michigan Court of Appeals, yeah, we did. not further. Yeah. Uh, what we're hoping for is to set another huge statewide precedent. Right. And, and if the, right now, there's, there, I would say there's a good, in just a rough estimation, at least 20% of the schools in the state are allowing open carry yeah. in their schools. It's, now, yeah. Just think about that. Yeah. Brian, when, when you formed Michigan Open Carry, did you ever think no. that no. just 20% of the schools in the no. state would be allowing open carry? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. I, I, not, I, not even 10 years down the road, too. I know it. And I would never have imagined a, a, a court of appeals... Uh, statewide president involving uh, gun rights in any way coming from Michigan Open Carry. I'm very proud of you guys and, and what's happened since uh, the formation of that. Yeah, we're pushing it. We're doing great things. We have a great attorney. And, and once the Michigan Court of Appeals rules in or weighs in, if they rule on our side, which I'm very confident they will, yeah. every public school in the state will have to follow the law, right. which means they have to allow open carry in their school. Right. Because right now they'll... That's- Right now, what what's happening is some of the the schools are saying, uh, "Well, you know, yeah, it's it's legal to open carry and stuff, but we're going to trespass you." Right. They think they can make their own policy, right. and as long as the police departments are willing to go along with it, right. There's nothing we can do but sue, and we have. Right. But now we have to wait for the courts to do whatever they do, and that's taking a very long time. All right, Unfortunately, Tom- if anyone else worked across the state were to file suit. Their local judge is probably just going to wait for the Court of Appeals case to, to right. weigh in. So I, if there were a way we could speed this up, I would do it. But unfortunately, I didn't know, no way yeah. to speed this up. It moves slow, but maybe that's good yeah. in some ways. So <clears throat> Sure. All right, Tom. Well, I want to I wanna thank you for your time and, and for chatting with us. If you want to just uh, give us an idea how to find out about Michigan Open Carry, any big events you have coming on, anything yeah, else you want to plug. Plug the picnic in August. <laughs> sure. Well, we we got two picnics. We got one coming up this weekend in Ann Arbor. That's right. A oh. big Michigan, Michigan open carry picnic right in downtown Ann Arbor this weekend, this Saturday from noon to three. You can find more information online. We're on Facebook. Uh, find us Michigan open carry on Facebook. We have a page. We have a group. You'll also find our website, miopencarry.org. Nice and easy. Uh, again, those picnics are with Michigan gun owners as well. We're partnered together. And then we have another one in the Grand Rapids area on August 13th, which is also our, our annual meeting for any uh, MOC members that might be listening. Right. And that's in elections for new officers and all that stuff goes on. Yep. And lots of fun in the heart of the beast in Grand Rapids. Yep. <laughs> okay. Ann Arbor and Grand Rapids, Both. two great places to be. Yeah, yeah. those will be fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks for having me on, guys. Have a good night. You You too. too. Bye-bye. Good guy. All right. That was miopencarry.org, right? Facebook. Yeah. Just Michigan Open Carry, Inc., and you'll find everything you need to find. Yep. Everything? Everything Everything you need to know about Michigan Open Carry. Buy our T-shirts, open or at odd show. Oh, yeah, at odd show dot com. You can also head over to Facebook.com slash at odd show. Ooh. Excuse me. Well, do you hear I don't about the do you hear about the uh Detroit police officer that yes. was demoted because of his personal Facebook page? He made some comments on there and I did. You know, it's one thing if you're a private business and your employee uh, come on. And your employee uh, says something bad, but this is a government business. Uh, you can't employee. you can't you can't what? He didn't say anything really bad. I mean, that's no, no, no. What I'm saying is you're having trouble because you, you want to be like, 
you want to be so mad at them that even when they remove somebody who is obviously doesn't have the right mindset to do the job. Oh, I don't know. You, you want to be angry about that too, right? Cuz I mean, Certainly. look, cuz cuz I don't have to agree with you what he says, you can't but tell I agree me with that his, his right to you say can't him. tell and he has the right to say it. Well, yeah. But you can't tell me that his but personal he's being punished by a government entity. You can't tell me that his personal opinion yeah, sure, but any public employee, they have policies that you have to follow. Mm, I don't know. They, I, I think you on do your, know. On your own time? Well, On your own Facebook yeah, page? I don't know. And so, not representing yourself as a in, government employee? In, you think his personal opinions and the way he expresses himself has no bearing on how he does his job? I, it shouldn't. Oh, as, I'm as, sure as, it shouldn't. As a government. I'm but, sure it shouldn't, but when he murders I could, someone, I could, uh, I, I could argue. I, yeah, maybe we should have looked at, you know, if his it, personality. If it's General Motors and somebody's talking bad about General Motors, there's no protection there. Uh-huh. They can be fired for whatever reason. And I think that's very similar for public employees. No, it's not. Although, well, because of well, unions. What the hell do you have? Because of unions. What the hell is the First Amendment? You know, I mean. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't. I, I I think a government employee should be able to do anything they want, just like I can if I go down the to law. the public park. Yeah, it, I'm sure that's what you think. That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. All right. See you next week. All right. Bye bye.